Don Junior Masterclass. I've heard you are the Greek god of pasta making. I am. Would you like to have the honour? A chance to learn from the pros as Anna and George whip up a fabulous open lasagna with smoked trout and creamed leeks. Next up on Junior Masterclass, I'm going to show you how to make a really versatile French sauce. It's also made in Italy, Greece, European countries, and it's a sauce that everybody loves. It's called bechamel sauce, otherwise known as white sauce, and the dish that that's going to go with is my open lasagna with smoked trout and creamed leeks. Now the first step to making the perfect bechamel sauce is to heat your milk. So I've got 600 mils of full cream milk. We're going to season it with some onion, a bay leaf and some cloves and we're just going to stud that bay leaf to the onion so that goes straight into the milk. You'd be really surprised how those flavours travel through. Whilst the milk is coming up to a nice slow simmer we're going to get our roux happening. So that's actually cooking off the flour and the butter together so that's what will actually thicken the sauce. I add a tiny little bit more butter to flour, so I'm using 50 grams of flour and 60 grams of butter. And the reason I do that is because I have a looser mixture with having a little bit more butter in the pan when I'm making my roux and less chance of getting any lumps. So the butter's just about melted, we're going to add in the flour. Um, That's really important not quickly. to burn this, work quickly and if it's moving too quickly for you on the stove, remove it from the heat. And you just want to cook it out for a little while because you want to remove that sort of floury taste. Do you want me to pour this into there for you? Yeah, absolutely. Because I've started that all together, oh. I just remove the yeah. onion in one go. I remove my roux from the heat yeah. and slowly add the milk. I'm such a great cheat when it comes to this. I use a whisk. Ooh. And that's why my white sauce is never lumpy. Slowly okay. dribble so that in. So slowly, just give me a nice little amount at the beginning. Okay, that's enough. Yep. We just want to get that to a nice thick start. Okay, go for it, Georgie. Yep. And is that going to go back on the heat and cook out? Absolutely. So we're just going to whisk that all together straight back onto the heat. What consistency should it be as once you've put the milk in? Oh, yum. I want this to be a beautiful, smooth and light. Are you, you happy love, with that? It's just so velvety and smooth. That it's is looking ready, isn't it? It's yeah. nice and shiny. And see that? A perfect, smooth white sauce, no lumps. Mm. Definitely you need salt. You always have to taste when you're cooking. It also needs some white pepper. Ah. That's mm. lovely, isn't it? Oh. So there you have it, a very beautiful, versatile bechamel sauce. Mm. So next up, we're going to need to make some fresh pasta. You cannot beat fresh pasta. And Georgie, I've heard you are the Greek god of pasta making. I am. Would you like to have the honours? Ta-da! <laughs> I don't think there's anything better than making your own pasta. It's easy and it's a lot of fun, all right? So what we're going to do is, because we're going to flavour it with saffron, Anna. Ooh, okay. la la. What we need to do is make a little infusion that will go into our pasta dough, all right? So saffron comes from the crocus plant and mainly grows in the Middle East. Now, you know, when you use saffron, you use it quite sparingly. You only need a couple of threads because it's packed full of flavour and as well as that, colour. So we've got 100 mils of water in here, and to that we're going to pop about 10 little threads of saffron. So we pop 500 mils of flour into our blender here. To that we add three eggs, a pinch of salt, a little bit of olive oil, about a tablespoon. We've infused the saffron into the water. It's got this sort of tinge to it. Now we're going to add this saffron water to the other ingredients. So we just turn it on. And the great thing is, because Georgie's left all the strands of saffron in there, you'll get lots of specks of the saffron throughout the pasta when you roll it out, and it looks really pretty. The next step is to knead our dough together and bring it together. What you're looking for is a crumb consistency, okay, in the blender. So quite simply, out on the table, and then we just bring that dough together. We just work that dough, and basically, at this point, we're going to cling film it up, Set it aside and let it rest so we don't get a skin over the top and it dries out, okay? And we can just rest that, you know, until we need that. So if you're going to make your pasta in, you know, an hour or so, leave it aside. 
and just let it rest. And when you need it, you can start rolling out. So now we're on to my creamy leek sauce. Oh, delicious. So, very important, use the white part of the leek. Yep. It's no joke, I did have a friend ring me out the other day and said, it's really tough, why is it tough? Green part is not very nice. It's quite bitter, isn't it? It's bitter, but it's fantastic for using in stocks and things, like you shouldn't waste it. We can slice it in half lengthways, and then moving along nicely, cutting it into very thin julienne pieces. Now this does come with practice. So that's one way of slicing the leeks. The next way is cutting it down lengthways again. I'm going to show you the claw grip, guys, because this is the best way to chop and not chop your fingers off. So you grab the vegetable with your thumb and your little finger, and then with these three middle fingers, you bend them around like so, and they actually help to guide the knife along like this. And because your fingers are bent under, the knife can't actually chop them. Okay, lovely. There we go. So that's the leek. That goes into a fry pan. We just need to heat some butter. Melt that around. We don't want to burn that. And then in goes the leek. And we'll just turn that down a little bit. You actually have to treat these leeks very gently. I don't know if you're a garlic crusher lover, but I am. And I think for you kids it's fantastic because it's less chopping and it's really quick and easy. A little bit of garlic goes in and we just saute that off for a few minutes trying not to burn it until the leeks go pale. The leeks are perfect. Yep, what's that now there, Now I'm Anna? going to add some fish stock because <gasps> this is stock. a beautiful smoked trout lasagna that we're making oh, and the fish will delicious. lend itself beautifully to the sauce. And that's 150 mils of fish stock. Now you could use the chicken stock. If you yep. didn't have a fish stock, that's fine. You could use a vegetable stock. The fish stock has come up to a gentle bubble. So then we're just going to add some bechamel sauce into that mixture, a little bit at a time actually. And just incorporate that? Incorporate that slowly. We want to create a lovely, silky, thin sauce. This sauce is really deluxe, like it's very creamy, very smooth. The sweetness of the leeks comes through. Okay, here we go. And Ooh. keep stirring, Georgie, because here comes the naughtiness. Ooh. 50 mils of thickened cream. We need a bit of salt. White pepper going with the white theme. That is gorgeous. Creamy. That's going to work really beautifully with this lasagna. This dish sounds absolutely fantastic, but I've got to still do some work for you. That's right. Saffron <laughs> pasta. Yes, we, We've made it. It's been resting. I think it's time to roll it out. Great. We just unwrapped <laughs> the pasta and look at that saffron. It's just really now exploded into that flour and it's just coloured it and it mm. smells absolutely beautiful. We're just going to take a little bit off and we just roll that back up, set that aside so it doesn't dry out. We just dust our bench with a little bit of flour and we put our pasta machine at the widest it can go. The first thing we need to do is to laminate the pasta. So laminating the pasta is basically activating the gluten in it. Okay, at the moment, if you touch it, it's quite soft, all right? So basically, I'm folding the pasta into itself without adjusting the setting. That's the first step. We really need to get the gluten going to make our pasta. So how will you know when it's ready, George? You'll see by its elasticity, okay? Right, It'll be okay. really tight and tough. We've pretty much gotten the gluten going in it. Yep. Now we can start to mm -hmm. make it nice and thin by adjusting the setting. It really does need to be thin because it's actually quite a delicate pasta dish with the smoked trout and creamy leeks. We just trim that off there. Look how yellow this is, kids. That's come from the saffron. I'm just going to play it up one, so I yep. just need four rounds. Four rounds. That'd be great. A little tip for you guys, you can do these well in advance, pop them on trays and put them in the freezer. And as you need them, cook them. Now I'm going to show you how to make a salsa verde, which is a lovely Italian green sauce. And it's actually a cold sauce. And it goes beautifully with cold meats, fish, chicken, on potatoes, with just about anything. I love it. Do you love salsa verde? I love it. I love it. So you can use any fresh herbs you like. I've got some flat Italian parsley. We're only going to use the leaves. We can save the stalks for stocks. Yep. A good tablespoon. So that's a perfect yep. amount. What about the basil? Basil. I want about 10 leaves. Yep. I'm also going to use a little bit of dill because the dill will marry beautifully with the trout. And the mint? The mint. Not too much mint because mint can actually make it a little bitter. Okay. So less mint than the other herbs. Mm -hmm. And we'll just roughly chop these herbs. It makes it easier to pound in the mortar and pestle. A tablespoon of capers. 
They're actually quite salty, so you have to be careful when adding salt to this dish. I'm going to use one anchovy. Oh, yum. Next ingredient, a little bit of olive oil to start with. We're going to add quite a bit more, but just a little dash to get us going. Okay, let's get this salsa verde happening. So it's all about bashing and grinding it in. Oh, smell that, Georgie. It's beautiful. Yum. It actually doesn't need to be too fine. It can be quite rustic and a bit chunky. Yep. So I'm adding roughly about 150 mils of olive oil to this sauce. And I'm also going to add some lemon because you need some acidity to cut into the sauce. And this is a great little trick, actually. If you hold your fingers up just above where the juice is going through, you'll catch all the seeds. So that's just juice of half a lemon. Let's have a little stir and a taste. Very important to taste. That is as you spot go. on. It's absolutely spot on, guys. That is beautiful. Mm. There you have it. That's really simple. A salsa verde. Yum. Now, the star of the show, the trout. But the great thing is it's oh. been caught, it's been smoked. You bite cry that as the whole fish. And it's so beautiful. And here are the fillets. And, you know, that's really convenient because it's such a, a great product to eat. It's healthy for you. And it's ready to go. So all we need now is the pasta. So let's get it on. Done. Right, guys, to cook pasta, very simple. Salty boiling water, that's it. No oil, that's a myth. And then we just pop these sheets in, and because it's fresh pasta, it doesn't take long to cook. To know the pasta's cooked, it's quite simple. You have to taste it. So pull one of the pieces of pasta out of the water, taste it. If you think it's right, it's ready to go. But generally, rule of thumb, fresh pasta, two to three minutes. And pasta's ready, and we just... I know Anna wants these nice and flat. So we're ready to plate up. Okay, very simple. Now I like to start with a little bit of the creamy leeks on the bottom, a few little bits of trout. Yep. Okay, on with the first layer of lasagna. Beautiful. Another spoon of creamy leek sauce, a few more little bits of the trout, and away you go. Another one? Another one. And again, beautiful creamy leeks, trout. Another one? Another one. Lovely. Oh, look at that. And it's so simple. It's just really simple flavours. Just the leeks and the trout. And then we're going to kick it off at the end with the salsa verde. The last bit of lasagna. The last few spoons of this gorgeous sauce. And we'll put a little piece of the hero on the top. And now for our salsa verde. So we'll just put this around the outside. And this will work beautifully for this dish. And now just to finish it off, George, to make it totally gorgeous, I'm going to pop on some salmon roe. Whoa. I would love a few sprigs of dill over the top and then we're done. So there you have it, my beautiful open lasagna with smoked trout and creamed leeks. Yeah, yum. So who wants to taste some? Jasmine, Gracie and Zephyr. Here you go, there's a knife and fork. Go for, go it. for it. Oh my god, that's so good. Yeah? That's amazing. That it's delicious. Amazing. Wow, it's really light, isn't it, for a lasagna? Yeah. The sauce is amazing. Mm. And it's kind of fancy, isn't it? It's something yeah. you'd make if you had some special friends mm. coming over. It's beautiful. Or a dinner party or something. Yeah. Oh, it's so Thanks, good. guys. You can go and take your seat now. Good on you. Loving Thank it, Thank you Zephyr. so much. Thank you for your lovely comment. Here are my top tips for making open lasagna. Tip number one, always heat your milk before you add it to your roux. That way you've got less chances of it becoming lumpy. And remember, I used a whisk. It's much easier to get a smoother sauce with a whisk. Tip number two with the salsa verde, make sure you always use really fresh herbs and make sure you taste and adjust as you make it. Tip number three, the pasta. You either add salt to it and use it on the day or don't add salt and then you can use your pasta the following day. You guys are great. I hope you take this recipe away with you. I think from now on you'll probably be making fresh pasta because once you taste fresh pasta, there's no turning back. Mm.